Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I would like to present to you about the Peace and Security Organization. Our topic for today is about peace and security. So let us know first what is the meaning of peace. So what is peace? Peace is often equated with harmony and lack of conflict or violence. In common usage, it is generally regarded as a state toward which humans should strive. So what is security? Security is often treated as a common sense term that can be understood by an acknowledged consensus. Next, international security. International security is also called global security. It is a term which refers to the measures taken by states and international organizations such as the United Nations, European nations, and others to ensure mutual survival and safety. The first purpose of the UN, as stated in Article 1 of this charter, is the maintenance of international peace and security. To this end, the organization is required to take effective collective measures for the prevention and removal of threats to the peace, for the suppression of acts of aggression or other breaches of the peace, and to bring about by peaceful means. Adjustment or settlement of international disputes or situations which might lead to breach of peace. The UN has undertaken this heavy responsibility with varying levels of success over the years. However, in the nuclear era, international security in the absence of an organization like the United Nations is unimaginable. To save succeeding generations from the scorch of war. Those words is the very first word of the UN Charter in its preamble. And those words are the main motivation for creating the United Nations whose founder had lived through the devastation of two world wars by 1945. Since the UN's creation on October 24, 1945, and in the date its charter came into force, the United Nations has often been called upon to prevent disputes from escalating into war, or to help restore peace following the outbreak of armed conflict, and to promote lasting peace in societies emerging from wars. Security Council the Security Council takes the lead in determining the existence of a threat to the peace or an act of aggression. It calls upon the parties to a dispute to settle it by peaceful means and recommends methods of adjustment or terms of settlement. Under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter, the Security Council can take enforcement measures to maintain or restore international peace and security. Such measures range from economic sanctions to international military action. The Council also establishes UN peacekeeping operations and special political missions. General Assembly The General Assembly is the main deliberative, policy-making, and representative organ of the UN. Through regular meetings, the General Assembly provides a forum for member states to express their views to the entire membership and find consensus on difficult issues. It makes recommendations in the form of General Assembly resolutions. Decisions on important questions, such as those on peace and security, admission of new members and budgetary matters, require a two-thirds majority, but other questions are decided by simple majority. So how does UN promote peace and security? The United Nations was created in 1945 following the devastation of the Second World War with one central mission, the maintenance of international peace and security. The UN accomplishes this by working to prevent conflict, helping parties in conflict make peace, deploying peacekeepers, and creating the conditions to allow peace to hold and flourish. These activities often overlap and should reinforce one another to be effective. The UN Security Council has the primary responsibility for international peace and security. The General Assembly and the Secretary General play major, important, and complementary roles along with the other UN offices and bodies.
How does UN maintain international peace and security? UN maintain international peace and security by preventive diplomacy and mediation. The most effective way to diminish human suffering and the massive economic cost of conflicts and their aftermath is to prevent conflicts in the first place. The United Nations plays an important role in conflict prevention using diplomacy and good offices and mediation. Among the tools the organization uses to bring peace are special invoice and political missions in the field. The UN Office of West Africa in Dakar, Senegal was the first regional conflict prevention and peace building office of the United Nations. Its overall mandate was to enhance contributions of the UN towards the achievements of peace and security in West Africa and promote an integrated regional approach in addressing issues that impact stability in West Africa. It was recently merged with the Office of the Special Envoy for the Sahel or OSIS into a single entity. Peacekeeping Peacekeeping has proven to be one of the most effective tools available to the UN to assist countries to navigate the difficult path from conflict to peace. Today's multidimensional peacekeeping operations are called upon not only to maintain peace and security, but also to facilitate political processes, protect civilians, assist in the disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration of former combatants, support constitutional processes and the organization of elections, protect and promote human rights, and assist in restoring the rule of law and extending legitimate state authority. Peacekeeping operations get their mandates from the UN Security Council. Their troops and police are contributed by member states, and they are managed by the Department of Peace Operations and supported by the Department of Operational Support at UN Headquarters in New York. There are 12 UN peacekeeping operations currently deployed and there have been a total of 71 deployed since 1948. In 2019, the Secre Secretary General launched the Action for Peacekeeping Initiative or A4P to renew mutual political commitment to peacekeeping operations. UN Peacekeeping Operations by Region UN's peacekeeping operations in Africa are First is the United Nations Mission for the Referendum in Western Sahara, or MINERSU. Next is United Nations Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in Mali, or MINUSMA. Next is United Nations Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in the Central African Republic, or MINUSCA. UN Security Council There are also UN peacekeeping operation in Asia and the Pacific, and it is called United Nations Military Observer Group in India and Pakistan. Next is UN peacekeeping operation in Europe and Central Asia, and it is called UNMIC or the United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo and United Nations Peacekeeping Force in Cyprus. UN Peacekeeping Operations in the Middle East First is the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force, United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, and United Nations True Supervision Organizations. United Nations peacebuilding activities are aimed at assisting countries emerging from conflict, reducing the risk of relapsing into conflict, and laying the foundation for sustainable peace and development. The UN peacebuilding architecture comprises of peacebuilding commission, peacebuilding fund, and the peacebuilding support office. The peacebuilding support office assists and supports the peacebuilding commission with strategic advice and policy guidance, administers the peacebuilding fund, and serves the secretary general in coordinating United Nations agencies in their peacebuilding efforts. Countering Terrorism the United Nations is being increasingly called upon to coordinate the global fight against terrorism. 18 universal instruments against international terrorism 
have been elaborated within the framework of the United Nations system relating to specific terrorist activities. In September 2006, UN member states adopted the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy. This was the first time that member states agreed to a common strategic and operational framework against terrorism. Disarmament The General Assembly and other bodies of the United Nations, supported by the Office for Disarmament Affairs, worked to advance international peace and security through the pursuit of the elimination of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction and the regulation of conventional arms. Defense and National Security Protecting the state and its citizens from outside aggression is probably the most conventional task of any government. In its conflict resolution, conflicts involving states can be classified according to the degree of violence involved. Severe conflicts cannot be solved easily by exchanging views and trying to reach agreement. In cases where there is little trust, those involved may use third-party mediation or conciliation to try to find common ground turning to an honest broker who can break the deadlock. Conflicting states may bring their case to the Security Council of the UN or to the International Court of Justice or to some other authoritative international body. Mediation Attempt by a third party to reach an agreement between disputing parties on the basis of an investigation of the facts of the dispute. The use of violence between states is measured by the number of conflicts or rather limited. Just wars. In the international community, violent action is accepted only if force is used in self-defense or the action is authorized by the UN. Straightforward as these principles may seem, they are highly disputed in any given cases. The self-defense problem is even greater in the case of conflict within a state. Lastly, military expenditure. In spite of the determined attempts to regulate conflicts by peaceful means or to rely on UN action, many states maintain large armies and manufactured large amounts of military equipment. These are the top five states in the world with the largest defense budgets. USA. China, Russia, India, and lastly is Britain. Thank you for watching. Once again, good afternoon.